Anyway, the kids are all gone out, right? It's interesting how God puts his service together without uh, us all really being maybe aware of each other and the song leader versus uh, June sharing about her home group and using a phrase uh, regard to the importance of understanding God's word. Because my uh, subtitle today, even though I think in a bulletin that refers to God's word is complete, which goes along with our lesson in our text that you're using, if you're using the green book, this little green book, if you don't have one, we have some extra ones, and you're welcome to pick one of these up, even though we're about through with this unit of study, if you would like one, you're more than welcome to it, I have a few still in my office to see me after service, we'll make sure you get this one. And we've been following this theme in regards to scripture. We all know that there's 66 books of the Bible. We know that there are 39 books in the Old Testament, and 3 times 9 is 27. And we know that the New Testament has 27 books. That's one way I was taught how to remember it when I was in, I don't know, children's church somewhere uh, years ago. Uh, 3 times 9 is 27. That's how many books of the New, New Testament. But through the 66 books of the Bible, the entirety of the Word of God is so profound and so complete in all that it has. It's all that you need to succeed in life and fulfill the will of God in your life is in those 66 books. You don't need anything else. It's interesting to me how many paraphrased versions or other translations that man has tried to write over and over again to interpret, to translate, to uh, come up with an opinion. A lot of uh, uh, paraphrased versions of scripture are out there today. And a variety of things. People are all trying to do one thing, I believe, out of earnestness and out of sincerity. And that one thing is come to an understanding of what God is saying in his completed word. So that comes to me as a personal challenge for me to understand how I need to come to the point of understanding God's word. What will help give me the challenge or give me the opportunity or give me the desire to know more about God. Uh, Job even says in chapter 28, verse 28, in Job, uh, King James Version as well, the NIV Version, Job makes the phrase that once you learn understanding, you will no longer do evil. When you come to an understanding of what God is up to, you will no longer do evil. If I asked you how many of you did evil this last week, I would probably see a lot of hand prayers. I'm not talking about murdering somebody. I'm not talking about that level of evil. I'm just talking about maybe even thought life, living out certain things in your life, etc. It's interesting. The word understanding or understand is in the Old Testament shows up 159 times in the King James Version. And in the New Testament, uh, it's 135 times the word understand or understanding is expressed. If you take 159 times, 135 times in the New Testament, you must understand that God, in his completed word, wants you to understand what he's saying. Come to this place of comprehension. I think uh, Stan used that word when he was uh, sharing a little bit about how we need to come to a comprehension of God's word. That's understanding his comprehension of something. You know it. You know it works. It's a perception gain uh, that you gain an insight into that perception and into something that starts explaining to you what it really means and it starts developing a greater interpretation of what is trying to be said to you. I don't know about you, but every time I read God's word, I get a better understanding of what he is wanting to say and do in my life. If you're reading the word of God and you don't understand it, then you need to pray that God gives you 
new insights, a new opening, a freshness of your look, that he pulls the scales off your eyes so that you're able to see, and off your mind so that you're able to comprehend what he is wanting to say to you specifically at a specific time, at a specific moment, at a certain event in your life. God is always speaking to us by the power of the Holy Spirit. He's speaking right now to you while I share with you. I pray that he does. Praying for you, it seems this morning I, in my devotional time, I was having a, uh, an incredible experience of praying for every one of you that I could think of by name this morning. It's like, God, give that person, and I won't call out names this morning because we're being recorded and that wouldn't be fair to you. But every one of us, God is saying something specific to you, and I'm looking at you and connecting eyes with you and so on, and you know that God has been speaking to you where you are, and he wants you to come to an understanding. See, communication, God is communicating. Mm -hmm. And we know that communication has taken place with one thing that takes place, understanding. I learned that when my dad would say, Randy, go to the bedroom and pull down your pants. <laughs> Because I was going to whip him. I was going to get a whipping. Everybody knows where a whipping was. Those were the days when you had to do it in the bare bottom. Excuse me, but that's the way it was done. And for some reason, my brother John got me in trouble. It's always John. It's always my brother. We're 14 months apart. We were nearly like twins. But we, we did some crazy things together. But Dad would bring us into the bedroom especially me, and he'd sit me alongside the bed, and he'd, of course, give me that wonderful phrase, son, this hurts me more than it hurts you. Yeah. Would you love that phrase? And then he would go on to say, do you understand why I'm doing this? Think about it. At a young boy, it was important for my dad to teach me why he was doing the disciplines he was doing in my life. Do you understand, Randy, you did something I did not approve of? Well, the completed word of God helps us come to that mindset because remember the Bible, as we read in our uh, scriptures this morning, the scripture in the Bible is all scriptures God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, uh, correcting, training in righteousness, all those things. So I have to ask you the question, when you're going through the rebuking, the correcting, the training, the teaching, those things which are important because God's word, by the power of the Holy Spirit, is penetrating into your mind and heart. And then the question has to come from Father God. Like my dad would say in the natural, my spiritual father, God, would say to me, Randy, do you understand? Do you know why you're going through the challenges you're going through? Do you understand? Do you see the insight of what I'm trying to teach you and mold you, melt you, form you, and to who I want you to be. Because if you do, then you have understand. Somebody has to turn their phone off. Thank you. This is an incredible desire that I think is all listed through Scripture. I think one of the greatest examples is in Psalm 63. Turn with me. I'm going to give you several verses here this morning. Everybody's all right? Think about those cushion pews you're going to sit in next week. That's going to be much softer. But this psalm always has showed me the desire of a heart of a person, David, who wants to hear from God and come to an understanding of what God is saying. Psalms 63, verse 1. Psalm 63, verse 1. Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you, my soul thirsts for you, my body longs for you in a dry and weary land where there's no water. Now hear the heart of David. He's realizing there's more to the 
life that he's been living than what is just on the surface. And it takes this kind of concentration and effort on our part to get more from God and a better understanding of what he is doing. So you hear his heart, oh God, you are my God, earnestly I seek you. My body, uh, my soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory because your love is better than life. My lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with the riches of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. David gives a sense of urgency in his life, of needing to understand God all the more. Church, whatever you are going through in your life, whatever illness you've been diagnosed with, whatever life circumstance you found yourself in, no matter what your children might be doing or your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, 8 o'clock this morning, I got to see my great-granddaughter dance a ballet in Los Angeles. Isn't the technology wonderful? Live, 8.17 this morning, Charcy and I are watching the, our phones and watching Georgia, our granddaughter, who's 12, 11, going on 12. <laughs> I'm not totally wrong. You notice that. <laughs> and how she was able to dance this dance that she had, and she was being judged accordingly. Of course, she was perfect. <laughs> After the perfect, my great granddaughter. She was perfect. God wants us to have such a wonderful desire, a heart for more of Him. And all I read in that Psalm 63 is that David expresses to me that every one of us, the challenge of saying, God, I want more of you. I want more of your insight in my life. I want to know what you're up to, God. I want to know your plan, not only just for my life, just what your will is, but God, what are you up to on planet Earth? Thank you, Jesus. What are you up to concerning the politics of today? Don't tell me you're not worried. Every one of you of adult age are concerned about what's going on in our world. If you're not, you're, you've got your head in the sand. Because God wants us as a church to be ready and praying and earnestly desiring and understanding the day in which you live. Look up for your redemption draw night. Amen. You're watch out. I feel like preaching. <laughs> Wow, what an important part of our life. Go to Proverbs chapter 2. You'll find, you'll find in Scripture these wonderful truths from Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 2. And here, what Solomon is trying to express to us through these incredible words that are important for all of us, so that we can understand better because God is communicating and once we hear his voice the Holy Spirit is that still small voice that's whispering in your spiritual heart saying to you what God is doing and trying to give you the understanding and it begins here in Proverbs chapter 2 my son if you accept my words and store up my commands within you Turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding. And if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, that's what David was doing. And if you will cry out aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom and from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He holds victory in store for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in his blameless.
for he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. Then you will become confused. Was not that what it says? Then you will understand. Then you will understand. Now let's pause there for a moment. What will bring me to the point of understanding? If you look at the first verses of verse 2 of chapter 2, turning your ears to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding. David showed us what that meant when he said he sought for God with his whole heart. He was seeking for him. Church, I don't want to just, I'm, I'm not whipping on anybody. Please don't, don't hear me as some negative message that you're not doing enough. I want you to have all that God wants you to have in this life. Yeah. I, I was singing a song, you know, there's that country western song, we'll understand it, the by and by. I don't know if that's biblical. I don't want to understand the by and by. I want to understand right now what God's up to. When I get to heaven, it won't matter. Right now, I want to know what's happening and understanding what God is doing and what he's up to. To do that then, I have to have a heart that is focused and determined and challenged to get there. That your time, your effort, your energy, your mind, your eyes, all the avenues of learning are occupied with Jesus Christ and him alone. And what he desires for you to know and for me to know in our lives. For he goes on to say those words for us. Verse 9, then you will understand what is right, just, and fair. Every good path. For wisdom will enter your heart. And knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. And discretions will protect you, and understanding will guard you. Amen. You and I, we have challenges today. There are so many deflections. There's so many things that want to take up our time, our energy, distractions that are constantly coming up. As we come closer to the end of time, thank you, Abe, for teaching last Wednesday on end times. He has a wonderful insight. He's going to do it again probably another month. We'll do some more because it's important we understand the end times. When we look on the political scene, when we look at the world's circumstances and situations, we have to understand that God's grace has allowed understanding become part of our life today. Think about that. The work of grace taking place in our life is grace given to us of the understanding of what God is doing and what he desires to do in each one of our lives. Amen. Understanding is biblical. I told you how many times, what, 130 times in in the Old Testament, 150, excuse me, 159 times in the Old Testament, 135 in the New Testament. God wants you and I to understand. Understanding is part of the kingdom of God. So if you go to the book of Mark, listen to me, on Mark chapter 12, let's go there. The kingdom of God, Jesus was so emphatic about teaching that there would be an understanding by his followers. That those that were not only disciples, but followers of his that were ones that were going to minister, it was important to Jesus that they came to this place of understanding the kingdom of God and what it was all about. That's why he says in Mark chapter 12, and let's go to verse uh, 28. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked them, of all the commandments, which is the most important? 
people are seeking to understand what Jesus' opinion was. In verse 29, the most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. Ladies, that are my neighbors at Middlefield, I, I, biblically I gotta love you, it looks like, so I gotta love my neighbors. No, I'm a good neighbor, there you go, thank you. I heard an amen on that. So go on. the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is own, no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, and with all your strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, "You, the man came to an understanding. Do you see this? See it, church. This man, this teacher, comes to an understanding, and he says, your heart with all your understanding and with all your strength to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask any other question. What's it about? The kingdom of God. Understanding. And God brings us all to this point of understanding what the kingdom of God is about. So I ask you today, do you know and do you understand the principles of living in the kingdom of God? Because the kingdom of God begins now. This is not waiting for heaven, even though I'm going to be in heaven. But living out the kingdom principles is for us now. And it's important that we understand these principles. And if you heard the heart of David, what he was saying, you heard what we've been talking about in regards to giving up ourselves and having this challenge to focus on getting a better understanding of God, then Jesus says, these are the things I want you to understand concerning the kingdom. That you're to love the Lord your God with all your heart. Do you get that? Yeah. Understand it. He doesn't ask you if you feel like it. You're to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. That means everything about you, your personality, the things that make you who you are. Those are those important things with all your soul and with all your mind. Right up here. Jesus wanted to translate this whole thing and focus in on it. And it was important for all of those listening. And they were stunned so at what he was saying, they had no more questions to ask. Because he answered the bottom line. Do you love your neighbor as yourself? Do you love the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind? And with all your strength. David said, oh God, I want to see you. I want to know you. I desire you. He shows us the heart of someone who wants an understanding of what it is to live fully in the will and in the power of God. Let me say this in closing. The Holy Spirit is given to us so that he can help us come to this place of understanding. Go to the book of Colossians, if you would. Colossians chapter 1. Give me some Bible to read, aren't I? Thank you. <laughs> Colossians chapter 1, starting with verse 9, is so important because understanding is the Holy Spirit's job to help us with. You can't just muster it up on your own. Even though we have to have a willingness, as I just talked about, you have to have a desire a hunger, knowing that you need it, but then you need to have the Holy Spirit bring all this to your spirit. And that's why he says in verse 9, 
chapter, Colossians chapter 1 says these words, For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord. So why are we teaching them? That you come to a point of understanding. We are so that you can develop by the help of the Holy Spirit into being all that God wants you to be in your life as you serve him. He goes on to say in verse 10, and we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience and joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption for the forgiveness of sin. Wow. Do you understand how much he loves you? How much the Father loves you, each one of you. Don't turn to somebody and say, I'm loved. Come on. Yeah. Tell, them the Father, tell them the Father loves me. The Father loves me. He loves you so much, he's given the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit now will teach you and guide you so that you might have, with the understanding, when you understand this principle of who God is, what he desires to teach us, and that he's released the Holy Spirit to be the teacher that will teach you all truth. And if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. That's God's plan for each one of us, that you be free. I want you to be so free. I want you to be happy being a Christian. I want you to love being loved. Accept it. Sometimes the devil will want to whip on you and tell you just how bad you are. I want you to know, tell the devil he's a liar because you are chosen. You're the apple of his eye. He loves you more than anything else. You need to receive it and accept it and understand. Understand what the Holy Spirit is wanting to teach you. In order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord. We all want to please him, don't we? In every way. Bearing fruit. Don't we want to be fruit bearers? When I come to a greater understanding, then I can be bearing more fruit. What are some of the fruits? He talks about love, joy, peace. All these things are fruits. And I think understanding is a real fruit as well that we can have. Have great endurance and patience. Boy, there's one. In the NIV, he talks about this endurance. Going the next mile. Being able to get to the finish line. I want to finish well. How about you? You want to finish well? I finish well by coming to an understanding of who he is and what he desires in and through me. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for your word. Thank you that we can have this grace of understanding become part of our lives. And that we're not left alone. We're not abandoned to try to do it all on our own. Even though we need a desire, we have a heart for it, that the Holy Spirit's been given to teach us all truth. So Holy Spirit, take the word, the completed word of God, all 66 books of the Bible, and teach us, train us. We'll devote ourselves totally to serving you so that we might end well. We pray this in Jesus' name. While your heads are still bowed, maybe there's someone today that wants to receive the Lord as Savior. You don't know Jesus. 
as Lord and Savior, today would be a good day for you to say, Pastor Randy, by the raising my hand, I want to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of my life. If that's you this morning, just raise your hand if you would, please, so I can see it. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'd just like to pray with you and pray for you in Jesus' name right now. Thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you for that hand. Thank you, Lord. Others, in Jesus' name. Let's all pray this prayer together, shall we? Dear Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for me and that you rose again. I now want to serve you the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God.